Hello YouTube viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is just me an open source channel. Right, um, this is going to be a two-part video and I'm going to show you how to um, set up Kubernetes the hard way. Right, um, so far in my uh, Kubernetes series I've done lots of videos um, on how to set up Kubernetes cluster. Um, so basically we started with uh, kubeadm, um, how we can install, uh, set up a Kubernetes cluster using kubeadm command, um, kubeadm init, um, and you give the options. Um, and then we automated it using Vagrant uh, with shell provisioning to automatically uh, deploy a cluster. You just have to do a Vagrant up and it will set up a, a multi-node cluster, um, a master and two worker nodes. And then we explored Minikube, we explored uh, micro kaitas. Um, those are single node cluster just for development purpose. Um, and then we also explored a uh, Kubernetes cluster on uh, LXC containers which are um, lightweight. Um, so uh, this is going to be a video on how to set up Kubernetes cluster the hard way. Um, it will be very useful um, especially if you are uh, uh, looking to get uh, Kubernetes certification. Um, like CKA or CKAD, Certified Kubernetes Administrator or Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. Um, it will be more useful if you are looking to get uh, administrator certification. So this is going to be a lot, there's going to be a lot of administration task um, in this video. Right, um, the documentation I'm going to follow is uh, Kubernetes the hard way uh, by Kelsey Hightower. So if you search for it, Kubernetes the hard way, and here's the GitHub link, uh, Kelsey Hightower, and basically I'll be going through all these lab exercises. Um, so this video, part one um, of this series, will be about um, exploring things um, everything is going to be theory, so I just want to split this into two videos just because um, I don't want to have a very lengthy video. So the first part is completely theory. I'm going to explain each and every uh, thing um, in each of the lab what we are going to do. And then on my um, second video, part two of this uh, video, it will be fully hands-on. So I don't want to combine the theory and the practical hands-on together because it will go over an hour. Um, I want to keep the video to um, less than an hour. Uh, the second video is going to be the uh, the biggest one. Um, so I'm going to cover all the topics uh, theory-wise uh, in this part one video. Right. Um, if you look through these documentations uh, by Kelsey Hightower, uh, these documentations are for uh, are specifically designed, uh, written for uh, Google Cloud Platform. So, um, but what I'm going to be doing is, uh, I'm not going to be doing it on a Google Cloud Platform. I'll be doing this on my uh, local workstation using bare metal, and uh, specifically I'll be using LXC containers. I'm not going to be using virtual machines, uh, because LXC containers are lightweight. I can spin up as many containers as I want. Um, so there will be lots of uh, changes that I'll be uh, doing to these documentation. So if you follow these documentations, um, you have to do a lot of changes to make it work on bare metal. Okay, as usual, I've got some notes um, written for this video, so I'll be going through those notes. Right, um, regarding my setup, um, I've got a host machine, um, which is a Dell laptop with 8 CPU and 16 gig of RAM. And I'm running Fedora 30 uh, GNOME edition. So I've been using Manjaro Linux. Uh, recently I switched to um, Fedora 30 which got released a um, few weeks ago. Um, I tried it and it's looking um, pretty good. Uh, I just wanted a change that's why I went to Fedora 30. Okay so that's my host machine and um, regarding my cluster, uh, the Kubernetes cluster will consist of these LXC containers. So I'll be having three master nodes. Uh, they'll be named controller 0, controller 1, controller 2, and three worker nodes, worker 1, worker 0, worker 1, worker 2. So all of these will be uh, Ubuntu 18.04 containers. Uh, each of them will have two CPU, two gig of RAM. Um, 
I'll be as these um, as this is a multi master Kubernetes cluster, we need a load balancer. So basically all the worker nodes will communicate with uh, the HA proxy load balancer uh, to talk to the individual master nodes. So these master nodes will have uh, different IP addresses. So we don't want to be connecting to the individual master nodes. So um, all the communication to the API server, uh, API server component on these master nodes will be via the load balancer. Uh, the load balancer is again an LXC container running CentOS 7. Um, I'll be using HA proxy for load balancing. So when it comes to uh, multi-master uh, Kubernetes cluster, you've got a couple of uh, setups, a couple of scenarios. So one is stacked topology, the other one is a separate HCD cluster. So when it comes to stacked, um, you put one component on top of other on the same node. So that's stacked. Um, so we're going to use HCD uh, component on each master node. So we'll be deploying an HCD uh, node, HCD image on each of the master nodes. Um, the advantage of this um, topology is um, less number of containers. So each master node will have its own HCD node as well. Uh, but uh, when it comes to um, high availability, uh, having a separate HCD cluster will be more highly available than this setup. Uh, but for this video, I'm going to use uh, this setup here, which is a stacked topology. Uh, but the, the API server, the controller manager, and all the master components on this node can only talk to the HCD on this node. So the API server on the controller 0 won't be able to talk to the HCD node on controller 1. So that's stacked topology which we are going to see um, in this video demonstration. And the other topology is this one, having a separate HCD cluster. So uh, this one here involves uh, additional three LXC containers uh, for each of the uh, HCD nodes. So we've got HCD 0, 1, and 2. These will be the HCD cluster. And we have separate master nodes. And again, the worker nodes will communicate with the controller nodes using the HA proxy. So in this setup, if an HCD node uh, goes down, we still have another two HCD nodes in the cluster. Uh, and if a controller goes down, we still have two more controllers. But in our previous setup, if a node goes down, it also takes with it uh, one of the HCD as well. So it's kind of, you have to uh, decide which one works better for you. But in this video, we'll be concentrating on the stacked topology, um, having HCD component uh, deployed alongside the master components on each of the uh, worker nodes. Okay, so um, we'll be going through a series of uh, labs and the first one will be installing the client tools on your host machine. So we'll be installing these three binaries, CFSSL, CFSSL JSON, and kubectl. Um, so we'll be using these two uh, binaries, programs, CFSSL, CFSSL JSON, um, for generating and signing uh, the certificates. Um, so this video, part one and part two, um, if you go through these videos, it will give you a very good understanding of how the individual components within the Kubernetes cluster work together, how uh, different components talk to each other, and it gives you a very, very fundamental idea of how it works. So once you go through the, uh, the automated way, once you learn all the concepts, um, how you can initialize a cluster using kubeadm, I would recommend you to watch these video series to get a good understanding of how everything works uh, in low level. So the first lab will be about installing the client tools, um, all these components. We need these to generate the certificates. So each and every component in, the, uh, in your Kubernetes cluster talks to each other, um, so they need a certificate pair, a certificate and a private key. Each of those components need that. Uh, to be able to talk to another component. So that's the way they identify each other. So we don't want any um, different uh, client to talk to the server. So only the authorized client should be able to talk to the uh, to the API server. So for that, we need 
um, certificates so we'll be installing these binaries on the host machine and um, then um, we'll be generating the TLS certificates using the um, uh, the CFSSL and CFSSL JSON okay so we'll be generating uh, first we'll be bootstrapping the certificate authority itself and then using that certificate authority we generate certificates for the rest of the components so for the admin user, so the admin user is the one uh, you'll be running uh, kubectl. Using the admin user, you use kubectl to interact with the cluster. So we need to generate a certificate key pair for the admin user. And then we generate the certificate key pair for the kubelet uh, that runs on each of your worker nodes. And then we create the certificate key pair for the controller manager, kube proxy, kube scheduler, API server and a service account. So once we create these certificate pairs, we need to copy them to each of the worker nodes and the uh, the master nodes. Okay, and then we gonna generate the cube config. So cube config uh, is just a configuration file for each of these components. So for example, kubelet, you need to tell kubelet where to look for the uh, the configuration file. Uh, the configuration file will contain details like um, where is my API server, the uh, the host name, the port number, um, how to contact the API server, and using what user um, I'll be connecting to the API server. And uh, it will also contain details like uh, the certificates um, used to uh, connect to the API server. And then again, once we generate all the cube configurations, we're going to copy them to the, uh, the worker and the master nodes. Data encryption. So all the data, the state of your Kubernetes cluster is stored in HCDS key value pairs. So when you store data in HCD cluster, we need to make sure the data is encrypted. So this is called uh, the data encryption at rest. So whenever data is stored in uh, HCD cluster, we need to store it in an encrypted way, not as a plain text. So we'll be using a data encryption key and then a config file. And then we'll be copying the uh, key and the configuration to all the master nodes. So when when it comes to bootstrapping the HCD node, we'll be using the, uh, the encryption configuration um, to encrypt all the data that's stored in the HCD cluster. Then we're going to bootstrap the HCD cluster. So that's the first um, step. On each of the controller node, we're going to do it one by one. So we're going to log into the uh, first controller node and then we're going to set up HCD. And then we'll be deploying HCD on the, uh, the other two master nodes. So thereby, we'll be setting up an HCD cluster on each of the master node. And then we're going to bootstrap the master nodes. So when it comes to bootstrapping, basically we are deploying the API server, the controller manager, and the scheduler. So we'll be doing this um, on all the master nodes. Uh, we can do that in parallel. And once we bootstrap the master nodes, we then go to bootstrap the worker nodes, worker 0, 1, and 2. So on the worker nodes, uh, we'll be deploying kubelet, Cube proxy container D, so that's the uh, the container runtime, and we'll be deploying a network configuration, network configuration, uh, container network interface. I think CNI. Okay, so on worker nodes, you have to bear in mind. Um, so I'll be deploying all these LXE containers, all the master nodes and worker nodes in the 10.240.0 network. So that's the uh, the nodes. Uh, network range. So for each of these worker nodes, whenever you deploy a pod, uh, we need to have a pod network. So the pod network for worker 0 will be 10.200.0.0 and for worker 1, 10.200.1.0 and for worker 2, 10.200.2.0. So whenever you deploy a pod on these worker nodes, the pods will get the IP address in the range um, as defined in the pod uh, network range. Right, pod network routes. So 
once we bootstrap the worker nodes, we are good to deploy um, a deployment resource um, or a stateful set or anything you can deploy. But you have to bear in mind there is one more step that we need to do. If we don't do it, for example, if you deploy a pod on worker zero um, on this pod network, it might get an IP address. For example, it gets 10.200.0.5 and you deploy another pod that gets scheduled on worker 1 and it gets IP address in this range for example it gets 10.200.1.10 so at this point this pod won't be able to communicate with this pod so we need to tell how uh, this network can reach this network or this network can reach this network so that's where we need to define um, a pod network route so basically we are telling if there is if this pod wants to communicate to this pod what route it needs to take so if you follow the uh, kubernetes hard way um, on the cloud provider like aws or google cloud platform you can create a route so as we are deploying this on bare metal we need to create a static um, route on our host machine for example all the traffic going out of this network needs to go via the worker zeros network to be able to reach the other networks so we are going to create a route on our host machine for each worker node so basically we'll be using the IP root add command um, and setting this IP address as the gateway so all the communications going out of 10.200.0.0 will go via the node's IP address as the gateway and then it will be able to reach the other networks. So this is the uh, the overlay network and we'll be using Flannel as the uh, the overlay network. So all these uh, networks 10 to 40, 0, 10, all the worker nodes, um, the interfaces are bridged. Since I'm using LXD containers, uh, there will be an LXDBR0 bridge created for these networks. So it will make a lot of sense when I uh, show you the actual demonstration in my next video. So this is just a theory part. So part network routes, okay, so that's basically it. So we'll be deploying this cluster with three master nodes and three worker nodes. So many viewers asked me uh, if I could do a video on uh, multi-master. So all the videos I've done so far uh, is about just one master node and multiple worker nodes. So when it comes to high availability, we need to deploy multiple master nodes and multiple HCD nodes. And then we need to deploy a load balancer um, to load balance the traffic between these master nodes. Um, so that's it um, for this video part one. In part two, um, I'll be walking you through all the uh, hands-on that we discussed in this video. So stay tuned in. Uh, the next video is going to be very interesting. It's going to be a bit lengthy video, unfortunately. I'm going to walk you through very quickly my next video um, because I've covered all the concepts that I'll be doing in my next video in this video. Um, so please uh, understand this video completely before proceeding to my uh, next video. Um, if you don't understand any concept, please leave me a comment and I should be able to get back to you um, and I'll be more than happy to help you um, if you don't understand any concept that this one you make sure you get the fundamentals right and the next video is going to be a very big one and there'll be a lot of copy paste um, I'll be basically using the Kelsey Hightower's documentation um, copy paste and I'll be doing that very quickly so make sure you understand this video and uh, thank you so much for your time watching this video um, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you want you can click the uh, subscribe button you'll get notified whenever I post new videos I basically post videos uh, once every week um, on Mondays right um, again thank you so much for watching this video and I appreciate um, your interest in learning Kubernetes thank you so much see you in my next video bye bye